Hello, and uh, welcome back to uh, my dining room. So, uh, yeah, kids are asleep, wife's playing Overwatch, uh, plays Platinum with Zarya, so there you go. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working. So, let's get this done so I can get to sleep. So let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so uh, let's just talk briefly about what we're going to do today. So uh, this is... Uh, about, uh, oops, I meant to, didn't mean to, hang on, I accidentally saved over something I didn't want to. Alright, so let's go ahead and undo all the changes I did, uh, to turn this, to blank this out, so that I can post that later. Alright, so I'm going to save another copy. This is the, the interpolation for event, using the Van Ron matrix, and what we're going to do instead here is we are going to Place this with uh, Newton's method for divided differences. And if I can only spell Newton, there we go. All right, and yep, save it there. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, use the Newton uh, method uh, of divided differences here. And so we're going to keep a lot of this code the same. Um, I don't know why this is lingering. That's frustrating. All right, well, I just pick something. All right, uh, so um, what we have is we have this function that we want to interpolate. We want to keep the interpolation sites. This is still polynomial interpolation. Um, I'm going to move this guy up here because we do need to keep track of the number of interpolation sites we have. Um, but then after that, uh, this Vanderbilt stuff needs to go. And uh, and we're going to be devising polynomials in a different way. So I'm commenting out this code so that it's not going to actually be executed. Uh, but maybe we'll want to refer back to what we did last time because it might give us a good idea of what we want to do next time. Okay. So uh, this was just plot code, so we'll leave that in. Um, this is for plotting the polynomial. For the moment, we don't have a polynomial to plot, so I'll get rid of that. And, uh, and now I'll get rid of these, and now let's just take a look and see. We should have the interpolation sites and the function we want to interpolate. And so let's see, oh, here we had a problem. Uh, column 25, oh, uh, it wants something there. Um, put a zero. All right, so let's see. And ta-da, there we go. Uh, so we have exactly the same uh, function we saw before and the interpolation sites. Um, and we want to make uh, a new a new routine to come up with a polynomial approximation. Now, this routine is going to give us the same polynomials that we got with the Van Von matrix, so in some sense, it's not going to be very satisfying as far as seeing a new method. Uh, but at the same time, it gives us a, an opportunity to explore something called uh, recursive functions. And so, um, so we're going to get into doing that. Okay. So, uh, so what do we need for uh, Newton's uh, divided differences method? Uh, well, we're going to need uh, the Newton uh, polynomials. Uh, this is stuff like x minus uh, x1 times x minus x2, uh, etc., right? X, x minus xi, right? Uh, so we're going to need those, and then we're going to need the, I'll call them the weights, uh, ai. Uh, which were that that funny di uh, difference formula. So we had y um, uh, y one up to uh, y uh, i minus one was what it was. I think we would stop because a naught was the first one, and that would go oh, so it would be i plus one. Uh, yeah, so a naught got y naught. I uh, got y1 uh, according to our indices, and maybe I 
should have selected them better. Um, but basically, uh, that's what you get. And so, uh, and we come up with a formula for these guys. Uh, you, this is using the Newton's divided difference uh, formula. And we'll come up with the answer for those guys using recursion. So, uh, and so that, that's going to be something we do. So, uh, so I'm just going to say for i going from 1 to uh, the number of interpolation uh, points we have, uh, minus 1, because I, nope, nope, uh, up to the number of interpolation points, let's see. So we want to go, we have a n plus 1 interpolation sites, and we want to go uh, up to a polynomial of degree n. And so uh, the way that we accomplish this is uh, we're going to have uh, a, a constant term, a linear term, a quadratic term, et cetera, up to degree n. So that means that we need to have uh, n plus 1 uh, coefficients. Uh, the degree of the polynomial uh, actually has n plus 1 terms if you count the constant. So. Uh, okay, so that means we need to actually match up the number of interpolation sites. Okay, good. And so uh, I'll say a i is equal to um, uh, divided differences, uh, and my email program wants my attention. All right. Okay, it's top jumping. Okay. I. Uh, Divided differences, and um, so I'm going to say this is going to use interp y up to uh, um, so this is our function here. Uh, it's going to use interp y up to uh, y um, from one up to i, and so I. So yeah, there we go. And, uh, and then we're going to have interp t is also going to be used there. So let's just go with a good old fashioned t y. So put that first one up to i. Right? There we go. We'll define this function later. But for now, uh, that's what we got. Uh, we should note the difference in notation. Uh, so uh, since MATLAB uh, starts all vectors at uh, index one uh, AI corresponds to a I minus one in the notes, All right? So just so we know. So A1 corresponds to A0. Uh, in A1 in MATLAB corresponds to A0 in our notes. So, okay. Uh, now let's make the polynomials. Uh, how do I want to make the polynomials? Okay, so I, uh, hmm. Okay, so we're going to be building these one at a time. And we're going to start with just um, a constant function. But then we need to take the constant function and we need to append, uh, and then we need to multiply by, we go from a constant to x minus x1 to x minus x1 times x minus x2. And so we always build on the last one by multiplying by the next term. And so we can take advantage of this and we can actually, um, and we can build it, these things up one at a time. So we're gonna say, um, we're gonna make a, yeah, we're gonna make a whole column of these. Let's do that. And, uh, and yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, okay, let me do it. So I'm going to say, uh, uh, I'm going to have polynomials, uh, and we're going to start with, and this is going to be at x, uh, and um, we're going to start with this just being uh, 1, okay? And so um, then for i equals 1 up to number of turbulence, uh, and I, oh, I going from two to no interpolance because we actually have um, our constant here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to redefine polynomials uh, 
as uh, x. Um, and so now I'm going to take uh, the polynomials that we have already. Oh, is this a good idea? I don't know. Um, that's not a good idea. I don't think. Okay, okay. Scratch that. Let's do a nested for loop. Alright, so 4 i equals 1 to number of interpolants, and then we're going to do a second one, j equals 1 to the number uh, num interpolants, i uh, and end, and end, and let's see what we get. So, uh, I'm going to try to build uh, a whole collection of functions uh, based on this, and, and we'll see whether or not this works. Looks like it's starting to storm outside. I'm sorry if it messes up with the audio. Um, okay. Let's see. So, always fun to experiment in class. Uh, let's see. So, we're going to do... Is this. I'm going to say... Um, this is trickier than I thought it would be. So, let's say polynomials again, all right, and at x. Now, the first one I want to do is I just want to have one there. And so, how can I do this cleverly? Don't want to get too clever. I mean, it has to be understandable, too. Um, Okay, I got it. So uh, here we go. Let me show you something in, in MATLAB. So if I take uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, so a vector, right? Uh, this, by the way, throws into a dummy variable called an, ants if you don't put anything here. So short for answer. Uh, and so now if I take the product of answer, let's see if we get a uh, prod of answer. Uh, there you go. Uh, it multiplies all of these guys together. All right, now let me show you something else. Now if I take, uh, um, well, let's go back to that guy we had before, answer, and I take two plus answer. Uh, so two is just a scalar value, now we're adding it to a vector. It's gonna do this entry-wise, one at a time. And there we go. It actually incremented each one of these terms by two, all right? So now, I'm basically what I'm doing is I'm going to have something like this. Um, so I'm going to take this, this vector, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up something like this. x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3, x minus 4, right? And uh, x doesn't exist, so throw an error if I do this now. And then I'm going to take, now I'm going to take the product of that. But I don't want to have I don't want to enter in x in each time, so I'm basically going to do this. Instead of having x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3, x minus 4, I'm going to have x minus this vector and put all that together. And so if I say put 2 here, now let's see what we get. Boop, <laughs> 0, because 2 minus 2 is 0. Uh, and then we're taking a product of everything along the way. Okay, but that'll give me what I want. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So, I, uh, yeah, here we go. So we'll start off with that uh, recursive definition. So, um, so polynomials uh, is going to start off with x being 1. Okay. Now, I'm going to say polynomial, anyway, um, sorry, I, at x, and now we're going to have, uh, Okay, sorry, broke my chain of thought. All right, so we're gonna have polynomials. So starting with just the constant function, now we're gonna build a whole vector function of these guys. So each time, I'm gonna be inserting the last function into the next one. This is actually kind of a recursion. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, polynomials, and I'm gonna evaluate that at x because I'm putting the last function in there again. Now I'm adding underneath, uh, that's what a semicolon does. 
and underneath here I'm going to add x minus we're going to take our interpolation sites here and I'm going to take uh, them up to a certain point interp uh, 1 up to I'm going to say i for a second but I think I might be wrong I might have to shift it by 1 uh, and then we're going to take the product of that so that's going to take X is going to subtract each one of these entries and then it's going to take the product of all those guys up to there. Now, I, if we go from 1 up to the number of interpolations, that's going to give us way too many polynomials. We want to stop at uh, minus 1, but 1 also corresponds to the 0 here. So I'm going to actually start this at minus 1. So, I, so this one should give us n naught. And the first one of this should give us n1. So i is going to start at 2, and it's going to go up to the number of interpolation points. Uh, and we look at, uh, and we have i minus 1. All right, so that means that first guy is going to start at 1, and we end at uh, uh, n, if this was n plus 1, according to the notes. OK, good. And so that gives us stuff, um, right? So that's going to give us our polynomials. OK, good. Um, now let's go look at here. I made a typo here. This should have been actually A of I. I'm just thinking about the notes so much. And uh, let's go ahead and add define A as uh, zeros, uh, 1 up to uh, the number of interpolation sites. So we have something to fill in. OK, good. So now we have most of everything we need. This is going to give us our Newton polynomials, like this. Um, and now we just need to come up with uh, this formula here. Uh, so uh, we're going to go ahead and make a new function in MATLAB. So you can't see it on the portion of the screen I'm sharing, but if you go over to New, uh, you can select Function. And when you do that, it gives you, well, a function. And so this is going to be our divided differences. All right, so what's going to come out of here is going to be some number. Uh, I'm just going to call this output. All right, and in here, uh, we call it here divided differences, so we better keep the same. And, uh, and just to keep ourselves sane, I'm just going to put the same uh, variable names here and here. So this is a different kind of function that we've seen before. Uh, so this is... Uh, So uh, divided differences is a cursive function that uh, gives the coefficients uh, for the um, Newton polynomials. Okay. All right, and uh, okay, I'm going to put output here is equal to something. I'll fill in that question mark later. Okay, so let's talk about what this is. So before what we saw were these sort of like a on the fly sort of defined functions where I put it at x and then I typed out something and then you press play and it and, and then you just put something in there and something pops out. And those are nice. Um, and especially if you want something really quick like just sign or cosine. You don't want to have to go and define a whole new function just to call them. Sine and cosine are actually already in MATLAB so you wouldn't need to do that anyway. Um, but this is a, a more formal definition of the function, and, uh, and this is what you see out of most programming languages. So this file starts out with something called function, and, uh, and the file name itself actually has to match the divided differences. So you see MATLAB fills that in here for us. Um, so I, And so then basically I, it says that this function I, is going to be giving us some sort of output, you could have several outputs if you want. You just put uh, commas here and then output one, output two, output three, or whatever you like. And um, and this is equal to the divided differences um, here. Uh, and so that is our function call. And it asks, well, what should go into that function? Well, uh, this, in our case, is going to be the interpolation sites and the, uh, the y values that correspond to interpolations. OK, so what you need to make sure you do is you start with function, you write this out, and then you end with end. And then uh, MATLAB puts that as all one thing. And what we 
And at the end of the day, you need to make sure you give an output to match up with whatever you called here. So we're going to make sure we put leave this here so we can fill it in later once we get to what we want. Okay. Now, why do I want to have something like this? Uh, so uh, the divided differences thing actually is a recursive algorithm. Uh, there's other ways to do it, um, uh, but you know, a recursive algorithm is something that's kind of important to learn at some point. And what is a recursive algorithm? Uh, well, a recursive function is a function that calls itself. And so, uh, and presumably, each function call will reduce the number of uh, inputs uh, so that each time uh, it's going to cascade until it finishes. Um, the divided differences is actually a really bad uh, example of a, of a recursive function uh, because it takes up a huge amount of memory. Um, recursive functions have to store the memory in the computer and, and leave it there uh, until everything has been executed out of the function. And so, uh, and basically what the divided difference is going to do is we're going to take this and terp y and we're going to shave one off and then put it in two different functions so we're actually practically doubling the number of terms in there. Um, if this is a really big problem, this would, uh, as far as like a competition, as far as a um, uh, number of interpolation points, like really, really big, um, with this, we'd have no hope um, of being able to do this because we've run out of computer memory way beforehand. Um, but, you know, truly, uh, we're not Google, we're not dealing with big points. We're going to have at most like a thousand, and computers can manage that, so we're not going to worry about that too much. So, uh, okay, so that, that's what we have. So, uh, let's go ahead and review this divided differences. And you see, I don't have to Google it this time because I have the wherewithal to look this up ahead of time. Uh, so this doesn't give a full uh, picture here. Um, I don't mean to advertise all this crap. Um, but basically, uh, so you have the first divided difference uh, is going to be just basically uh, the leading point minus the 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 smallest point, I uh, evaluated it at f, so this would be like y1 minus y0 over x1 minus x0, right? So you take uh, the guy on the very right and the guy on the very left, and you do that. Uh, now this one uh, is a little bit different. So what we're going to do is we, uh, for this one, we shaved off 0, and, and then we left x1 and x2, and then on this one, we shaved off the lead, and we have x0 and x1. And then we take the difference between these two x values on the bottom, okay? And that's more or less what's happening here. Um, we have uh, these differences. In any case, um, so I, uh, yeah. So basically, on this one we shaved off the first one, and on this one we shaved off the last one. Okay. So now, we're, and then you just it can, you know keep that going. All right. So let's get out of there, and uh, and take a look. So, uh, what I want to do then is I'm going to uh, hmm. Okay, so this is what we're doing. Uh, so, when you call divided differences, it does a divided difference. It makes this quotient. So let's make that quotient. So we're going to have a uh, divided difference uh, minus a divided difference divided by uh, x uh, last minus x first, right? Uh, so uh, that's nice. That doesn't. That won't actually work. But let, let's fill this in. So uh, remember, for that first term, we shaved off the leftmost point. So I'm going to take interp t, the thing that we got, and I'm going to instead of starting it at one, I'm going to start it at two. I'm going to go up to the end. Uh, end is a command inside of a vector that you can put to grab the last entry. And so I'm saying grab all of the, this, remember, uh, oh, end doesn't work if you're not inside a vector, uh, but basically um, uh, what I get when I put 2 quotient 10, I get 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 10. And so basically that's what I was saying, is it's going to grab uh, the index at 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And put it in here. Okay. I uh, now I need those same interpolation points for y. So y go from two to end, and uh, and yeah, there we go. 
Um, now, on the other hand, I'm going to take this and I'm going to, um, if you want to continue a line, by the way, in MATLAB, put triple dots and then you can jump to the next line. So, uh, now we're going to have interp t, which I want this to go from 1 and shave off the last point. So, I'm going to go end minus 1. And then interp y should go from 1 up to end minus 1 here. Okay. And now that closes that. I want to put parentheses around this whole thing. And I, and then x last should be interp t end. And uh, x first should be interp t1. Okay. So I, there we go. And I'm just going to put all of this into output, and that's exactly what we want. All right. Uh, so now, each time this is called, interp t is going to shrink, uh, but I, you know, by one each time, and so then this algorithm is going to hit a new uh, uh, vector, with just uh, one shorter. So that's not too bad. Okay. So there we go. That's a recursive algorithm for you. All right. And so that's going to give us all of these terms, these AIs. Now let's take a look and see what we get here. So I want to make a polynomial interpolation uh, function. So x. So here I just had a vector of my polynomials, a column vector of my polynomials. And here this should be a row vector. So if I put in, if you just say, uh, take a look at this. Um, oops, zeros. Here, um, it's going to be a row vector here of just zeros, and we're going to fill in afterwards. Uh, so I'm going to have a row times a column, and that will give me a scalar, right? So I'm going to take a. I'm going to multiply it by polynomials at x. Okay, cool. And that's my interpolation polynomials. All right, so I want to plot, uh, and this time I want to plot uh, this command t, by the way, uh, to uncomment. And so here, uncomment that. There we go. And uh, yeah, so. Okay, now let's optimistically press play and watch it all break. Yep, what broke? Out of memory. Uh, infinite recursion. Don't, don't tell me about an infinite recursion. Uh, so that's what I said. Memory problems with recursion. Um, let's see. This goes from two to end for those. So each of those should be shrinking by one each time. And interp one to n minus one. Interp. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to do something uh, pretty stupid. I'm going to tell this guy, it's claiming that it's running out of memory. I don't think it should be. <sighs> that was our uh, 30 minute intermezzo. Uh, okay, but like I was saying, I'm throwing this function in here. Uh, I'm not putting a semicolon, so I'm making a report. And uh, it's going to flood us real quick, but let's see. Uh, and did not work. All right, why didn't that work? Interp t. Oh, okay. I need to run this. <laughs> All right. Let's tell me that this is zero. Interp t is zero. All right. Let's stop there. Okay. So what? I, so I'm having some sort of problem uh, in our recursive function. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, running out of memory. Uh, very quickly here. Um, waiting for my lab to catch up on me. Just give it a second. Oh, that's what I did. Oh, that's stupid. Okay. Uh, quit debugging. Let's get out of this. Oh my god. All right. So, um, mm, yeah, I just keep calling to buy differences even when I have zero 
uh, polynomials. So what I did here, and don't do this when you're coding up this stuff, is I didn't make a case of what to do when uh, this ends up being an empty vector. And, um, and so it just kept calling itself, even though it, it killed everything, and it was done a long time ago. So, uh, so how, do, how do we make this actually end up ending? How you fix what I made a problem with? So if the length of this vector is equal to one, then I, it should just output whatever interp y was. Because interp y should also be at length one. And that's where I stop there. Alright, and else we do all this. Alright, end. That's a very important thing to do with recursive functions. Otherwise, you run into these memory problems uh, and it floods, and, and that's exactly what I was telling you would end up happening. You end up making sort of an infinite recursive, recursive function uh, and it never ends. And so you need to have some sort of terminating condition. Uh, on your recursive functions, and this is that. That's what happens when you don't uh, make a recursive function in like two years, and then uh, and then you try to do it live on a camera. It's pre-recorded, but I'm doing this all in one go. So let's see. All right, so now let's see if I can fix it. Oh my goodness, what happened? Oh no. Interp, oh. It thought I was trying to call a function. Uh, line 17. Okay. Uh, interp t. So it thought I was calling some sort of function. I I wasn't. I just forgot to put interp underscore t. Uh, there are built-in interpolation uh, commands in MATLAB, and we can talk about those later. But for now, I want to just code our own stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and push play. There we go. Okay, good. So you can see the interpolation is pretty much exactly what we saw before. You remember seeing that little tail at the end uh, yesterday uh, when we first posted that? Um, and now uh, we see that again. It's because it's exactly the same polynomial. Um, and so uh, I can, for instance, uh, make it worse, uh, say, every two points. So we're only interpolating it with three. So this figure, I could just be showing exactly the same figure as I did before. So you see that interpolating uh, polynomials, whether or not you use Newton's method, the van der Waals matrix, or you use anything else to find any of these interpolation polynomials, it gives you the same answer. Um, so let's see, point, uh, say take a look at one, see how we do. Okay, so two, 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 pretty close. And, um, 0 0.1. Yeah, you know, you can see a problem. It takes a little bit longer. Uh, it's taking a lot longer. So, how are you doing? I've been watching babies getting hit in the head a lot. Um, it's probably not helping my coding. Uh, my, on the positive side, my kids are throwing things a lot more accurately now. That's nice. Um, hearing my computer spin up, because it's working really hard on this. Because I gave it way too many interpolation sites. This is it's probably going to take a little bit. Um, yeah. Anyway, Gidget and I, we're... Gidget's gone. So, if you run to a point where uh, MATLAB's taking too long, uh, command period will end up stopping it, I think, usually. Here, let's pause, quit debugger. Alright, let's see. Let's do something a little bit more sane. 0.5. Let's give it a shot. Boom, there we go. Uh, and that's where we were before. And let's make it a little bit more accurate. 0.25. There you go. And beyond this, I'm not going to try to do it. Let's see. Can't do it. This is twice as much, but it's taking way longer. So 
So uh, the real reason for this issue, this memory issue, is because of the, uh, the recursive algorithm. Uh, it's putting a lot more effort into it. Uh, probably, uh, the truth is, is that we're doing a lot more calculations than we really need to. Uh, because in, on route, in route to figure out each of these AIs that I'm doing, we probably figure out each of the previous AIs again. Um, but I didn't want to be hyper efficient with the coding just because I'm trying to code something easy. And besides, if we really want to do, do this stuff, we can do it with uh, Vanderbilt matrices. But I wanted to show you a, a recursive function anyway. Okay, we're just going to stop there. And I wanted to just talk about, again, what we just did. Uh, so uh, we went through, we were trying to do an interpolation. Uh, this is exactly the same function that we interpolated last time. Uh, and in this case, we were making up a new kind of polynomial, these Newton polynomials here, which were x minus x1, x minus x2, x minus up to xi. And we threw all these polynomials into a column vector. So the first polynomial I call is just a constant function. The second one I end up calling, uh, and all the subsequent ones, takes all the previous ones, puts them in a vector, and it adds a new one on the bottom. How does it add that new one? Well, it takes uh, um, this interp t, uh, so our interpolation sites, and it looks at it from 1 up to xi minus 1. And so uh, we, we select only the subset of this row vector, and then we say x minus this. And so then, um, and so that gives us x minus x1, x minus x2, x minus x3, and a vector. And then I hit it with prod, which is a product of everything in that vector. And so it'll smash it all together, and ta-da, you have a polynomial. So we throw that into underneath the other polynomials, and then we keep looping until we go uh, having the first, the zeroth one, the first one, the second one, all the way up to uh, polynomial degree n. Then to make the weights that go onto these guys, I, I made a zero, a dummy vector that we fill in later. And with that one, I filled in this divided differences thing. Divided differences uh, is going to be a recursive algorithm where I put in the interpolation sites and the, uh, the values of the function at those interpolation sites. And uh, in this, I put it up to i, so going from 1 to i. Then I, and then what does this do? Well, if I, basically, if the length of the interp t is just 1, then I, it just outputs whatever interp y is, uh, because that's what it's supposed to do. But if it's bigger than 1, I uh, say it's 2, then it takes, uh, it comes in here and says, okay, well, I'm going to look from 2 to end. Well, if n, if 2 was all that was in, that in this vector, so we go from 2 to 2, so it would just give us 2. Uh, and, um, and same with this guy. And this one would just give us 1, uh, because n minus 1 would just be 1. So we go from 1 to 1, 1 to 1. And then each of these guys would be sent to a divided difference. It would call divided differences and give you a length 1 row vector and a length 1 row vector. So that means on the next iteration, it would just end here. And then it just does this over and over again. So then it looks at a size 2, a uh, size 3, and then shaves one off here, and it shaves one off here. And, and again, again, until it, it cascades back down. And each time we take the, the largest t value and subtract the smallest t value and divide it. And that is the divided differences scheme. So then that all feeds back into here uh, after going into output, which goes through this function call. And that is spat out here. And that's what this is. It's, this returns output. So AI sees output uh, out of divided differences and it assigns it there. And now this gives me a row vector of weights. Uh, so we have a whole row of the weights, and we have these polynomials. Uh, let me see if I can even take a look at what these are. So so my row of weights here, uh, columns 1 through 26. I think we stopped this a little early. Um, but yeah, so basically, uh, yeah, we did stop it uh, before I could finish filling in. Uh, but yeah, so we have a columns of weights. And we have polynomials. Uh, if I put in, say, polynomial of one, uh, polynomials of one, uh, there we go. Uh, we see um, we have these guys. And then we know that if 
one happens to be one of our interpolation sites, then after a point, all of our Newton polynomials are just going to be flat zero. So, um, so yeah, so that's what these polynomials are. I, okay, cool. Um, so, uh, in order to get the interpolating polynomial, we take our row vector, we multiply it by the column vector, it gives us scalar, and that's what the interpolating polynomial is. Right, and then after that, we just do the plot, and this works exactly as it did last time. And, uh, and so I won't go ahead and explain that again. But yeah, I think uh, this is good. Um, so uh, we have two ways that we've seen how to do uh, interpolating polynomials, one using van der Waals matrix matrices, one using Newton's method, and uh, as part of a portion of the project, uh, you're gonna be doing coding up uh, Lagrange polynomials. Um, and those can be done really similar to what you're seeing here. So, um, anyway, good luck with that. And, uh, yeah, I'm tired, and, uh, and it's, it's pretty late, so I'm going to go. Anyway, thank you for listening.